See? Hey, little chef, it's Papa. I'm today. I'm making burritos. Mexican burritos, his way. There's many ways you can make them. You can make them with shredded beef and uh, shredded pork, shredded chicken, whatever you want. But I, I make it with beef because they like it with beef. Shredded beef. My ground hamburger. Turn this down a little bit. So I got taco seasoning in here, uh, beef base, black pepper, and a little cumin. And then I got peppers and onions in here. I got a mix of peppers and onions to give the collar. And some salsa. And I forgot to pull out my refried beans last night. So, I had to go get a can of refried beans. Can of refried beans. These are new. Trying them out. Anybody heard of that brand? I never did. And then they're black beans. And a lot of my family likes black beans. So, what I'm doing now is just got done cooking the hamburger down. Now I'm going to mix this up in here. Just like this. Real good. This is going in the burrito shell. I'm going to make burritos today. Thought to show you guys how I make burritos. I don't know. And right now I want to apologize. Our house is messy right now because we're in the process of getting ready for camping. Not this weekend, but the weekend, the next weekend after. And we're trying to get everything ready. So. And plan what videos we're going to make for you guys. I'm going to make cowboy stew on the open fire. I'm going to make stew. Be stew on the open fire. And today, little hillbilly, he graduates from fifth grade. You guys need to congratulate him on getting into the sixth grade. Yeah. He's a middle schooler when he starts next year. Whole took, different school for him. Took a lot to get where he's at. Yep. He's a good little boy. He's been through a lot in his little lifetime. Lost his mom at a young age. Mm-hmm. He was six. Yeah. It was a struggle for a good two and a half years, really. Trying to get him adjusted. And it's still a little struggle, but there's days that he has bad days, you know. Wayne could have a bad day, you know. But I still love him, and I push him on to saying, do what you got to do to be good. Next month, he gets registered for football. Yep. See, guys, I'm sorry. My house is a mess. <clears throat> Move my monster. My Java monster. So, this is a big big step for a little man. and Big step for me because my youngest is going to be in sixth grade. And Papa here feels old. Yep, I feel old now because <laughs> my oldest, she's going to be in 10th. Mm -hmm. And then my youngest is going to be in 5th. I feel, I'm feeling old. Your youngest is going to be in 6th. 6th, I mean. <laughs> Sorry. See? I think I'm getting part of Alzheimer's a little bit there. <laughs> but I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of her. James is wanting a bowling party for his birthday this year. Oh. Um, yeah, there's a place not far from here, but it's called Money. Well, this is... Taco Blend. Taco Blend. I'm going to try it out in my burritos. So that, that brand there is a very good brand. It's Walmart brand. Put a little bit of cheese in the middle of this thing. Like this. Give it a little bit of cheese. I don't... I'm a cheese fanatic. As Papa says, a little bit of love. Yep. Just like this. This is a little bit of love. <laughs> That's been going away on me. Oh, I forgot to weigh myself today. Sorry, y'all. I would have told you my way. I'm down to 369, so 
I'm happy. As of last week, three sixty nine. I'm happy. So you just add your cheese and your meat mixture in there. You slap it over. And you put this part right here. You can take this, slap it down a little bit. Pack it tight. Remember, you got to slap your burrito, right? Yep, slap your burrito. Slap it silly? Yep. And there's the first burrito. And yeah. let me tell you, that's humongous. That's Papa style burrito. They'll be happy when they come home today from school. They like burritos. They love burritos. The tomato plants in the garden are up past my waist now. Corn's doing, everything's doing great. It really is. And this is our first year growing kohlrabi. And we're still trying to figure out what's, what's going on. It's still over. I don't understand it. I haven't looked it up yet to see if that's what it's supposed to do or not. But We're still learning. Yeah. We're, we're not. You can't make a... Uh, uh, coleslaw out of the kohlrabi there's cabbages growing out there baby cabbage <laughs> brussels sprouts there's real cabbage growing out there now yeah it's growing that's what i'm saying sorry y'all little man has been out there talking to the uh brussels sprouts going come on grow i'm ready for you come on he loves brussels sprouts with bacon yeah i make them with bacon and garlic they love them that way. He helped me weed the plants not too long ago, but we're going to have to go out there and weed around them again. I just know it. And school's getting out. Yeah, tomorrow's the last day of school. So. We make sure our kids go to school. There's some people here in this park uh, we live at don't care about their kids' schoolness. Well, they will when the people come knocking on their door. I think that's sad. Our blessing box outside is doing wonderful. Yeah, it's it's bloomed ever since we started putting in uh, advertisements and advertising it. The park, the trailer park, put it in their newsletter and put it on their Facebook page. And now it's on the food box page. Yeah. And we're getting people we don't even never seen before. And our local fans, if you have any food you want to donate to the blessing box, please feel free. I'm running low. Yeah. We got this one guy, he donates every week. Yep. I don't know. He goes to food pantries around here. I don't know. Last week, it seemed like it was ketchup every other day he was bringing. I don't like ketchup. Why did they keep giving me ketchup? Because that's <sighs> what they want to do, I guess. Just like um, at the mall. They want to give you garbanzo beans. They don't like garbanzo beans here. Mm-mm. Yeah, you just tap it a little bit to get that meat go down in that little pocket. Mm-hmm. And just roll it. Do you guys want me to videotape us setting up the campsite? If you do, comment down below. We'll do that. It's going to take a lot. Oh, yeah. It's going to take about two hours to get it all set up. Because we got a big campsite. Yes. And if you want to scan, uh, watch us fish, sit down there. and We're going to sit down at the river and fish. Papa made some homemade. Actually, it's called Lake George. Yep. Loud thunder. It's a big lake. They just... Oh, what did they call it? Drained it out. Yeah. And then they uh, restocked it. Well, they cleaned it and then restocked it and filled it back up. They and man, it looks beautiful now. They was cleaning it up. They kept enough water in there for the... The fish that were there, that pushed over to the other side where they was hiding them. And they uh, got it where it looks beautiful. And we're going to go and camp and... We fished in, a, and fished, we fished in Lake George before and caught some pretty good sized fish out of it. We're going to... Uh, the part of the camp site we're going to is called Rodeo Cla uh, Corral. Horse Corral. Horse Corral. They got... I believe it's five different campgrounds there. And we like that one. Because and there is big. one, and I'm going to admit, Papa can admit to this too, because we looked at them all before we decided on the one we wanted. It's it's called Deer Something. 
and it's uh, basically just for RVs and campers. Pull type, fifth wheels, stuff like that. And they're all out in the sun. We don't want to be out in the sun. Mm -mm. You can bring your pet or pets. They just got to be on a leash. And the lady at the office is very nice. Yes. She is a very nice lady. And she says, at night, if, you, if you're quiet and you listen, you will hear Indian drums. Yep. So, the, this is my six burritos. Now, instead of putting these in the oven, can you take these and deep fry them? At, I wouldn't do that because they I didn't put the seal on it. But you're going to have to put a seal on it. What's the seal? This is like water. Put water on it and seal it. Oh, so with it not being sealed, they're going to come undone in the grease. Gotcha. Yeah. You just put a little bit of water on the edges and just press it and let it sit for a while. The moisture of the water will seal it up against there. That's what they do with uh, in the machines, machine fabrics when they make uh, these uh, big factories and stuff. They'll run that tortilla shell through, uh, it's called a salt water base first, then they put the filling on it, then the other part rolls it, and then it's ready to go, and they free, flash freeze it. And the flash freezing is a big machine that's uh, down to minus 90% humidity, no humidity at all, and it, it's like a dry ice. If you put your hand on dry ice, it freezes your hand, and it and burns you. Mm -hmm. well, that's what that flash freeze does. When we went to the factory for it, they uh, got a machine and they show you when them, uh, any kind of thing they want to do freeze real fast, like vegetables and stuff. Because what they do with vegetables for freezing vegetables, they blanch them. They put them in a hot salt water bath for two minutes. Goes down a conveyor, two minutes, dumps out. Goes on this other conveyor and goes into this machine it's called a flash freezer gets no humidity in there and it's like dry ice by the time it comes at the other end it's frozen solid i mean it's frozen solid and it goes in bags and then they put it in freezers minus about 35 to 40 degree freezers they're big ass freezers and there's people who works inside there they wear a lot of clothes but they work in there i see them and it's pretty neat how they do all these freezer items and processed food. How's that sound? How they do all the processed food. But the biggest thing is you get more nutrients from frozen vegetables than you do canned vegetables. Because canned vegetables, they got to put in uh, canning salt. And then they got to put this acid in them to keep them from getting the can being uh, acinite means. That is, the can doesn't rust inside. But now they got this new sealer they put inside the cans there so they won't rust. But they still put all these chemicals. I call them chemicals to me. Even though it's salt. Preservatives. And preservatives in there just to keep them from ruining the can. But a reason why I can't eat canned vegetables, and I'm going to be honest with you, is there's something in them. That my body doesn't like. And I don't know what it is. I used to eat canned vegetables all my life when I was a kid. But when I got older. After having my first heart attack at age 32. After having that. I, I One day I went to go eat. You know. My normal meal. You know. Small meal and stuff. And I went to eat the vegetables. I was in the bathroom. Throwing up. I couldn't stop throwing up. So I had to go back to the hospital. I just came out of the hospital three days after that. And I came, went back to the hospital emergency room, and they had put me back in the hospital because of the canned vegetables poisoned me somehow. Your body chemicals change after your heart attack, just like if you have a stroke, your body chemicals change. The stuff that you you were used to eating before, 
you might not be able to eat after. So, so I know everybody likes canned vegetables, and you know it's made there for everybody. It's made in millions, millions of different ways over the years, but I can't eat them. I wish I could because it's cheaper. Yeah, it's cheaper, but you got to understand. got to understand that um, canned vegetables are cheaper, but you got to understand frozen vegetables are better for you because you're getting all the nutrients from the vegetables, the vitamins, the pro, uh, antibiotics, the protein out of some of the vegetables, and a lot of people don't know that. And the only vegetable you really don't digest in real life it's corn. It's corn. There's something in corn that even a cow can't digest. It. And they're still trying to figure out why. And I don't understand it either. But as of being a chef, you just serve it because it's delicious. And before you guys say, well, just rinse off the canned vegetables, that does not work. It still makes them sick. Mm. I used to rinse them off and then yeah. you still got sick anyway. So we just switched to the the bag vegetables and it's it's just better that way. And plus we got little man to eat more vegetables doing this way. Right. Little man would not touch a vegetable. Nope. When he first moved in one. The only way we got him to eat vegetables and the first vegetable we got him to eat was Brussels sprouts. I de uh, sauteed him with bacon and garlic in this pan and then I sprinkled some Parmesan cheese over top of it for him. And told him he needs it for iron because Brussels sprouts has got iron in it. And he went and he ate the first one. He's like, ooh, this is good. And that video is in the playlist on how to cook Brussels sprouts. And he loved them. Mm -hmm. So um, I gave it to him and he likes collard greens now. I got him to eat collard greens. I, I buy them fresh and I make them for him. I do it my way. If you guys want to see how I make homemade collard greens, I'll show you how to make homemade collard greens my way. Because I was taught by an old southern lady how to do it. And that's Sage's grandpa's mom. She's the one who taught me how to make collard greens the proper way. Um, I can show you a lot of different vegetables. When we get vegetables out of the garden, like if the kohlrabi does better, I could show you the greens off of kohlrabi. I could saute them with some hand hocks and serve it to James. And James, I think it's collard greens because they taste almost like collard greens. And that's the reason why I'm growing kohlrabi because there's three things I can one use of the out. Reason, one of the reasons why you're growing it. There's there's three things you can use out of kohlrabi. You can make sauerkraut out of it. You can make um, coleslaw out of it. And you can eat the greens off of it. The greens has got a lot of vitamins in it. That's the reason why I'm trying to grow them to figure out. I never growed them before, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm trying to learn. The only way you can learn by growing a vegetable is grow it and say, hey, I'm going to try this. And every time you fail, you got to put that in your mind. You're failing, but you're not really failing. You're learning. That's what we did with Brussels sprouts last year. First year growing Brussels sprouts here. We couldn't figure out why they wasn't growing as tall as they supposed to be. Brussels sprouts supposed to get almost six foot tall. And supposed to get a big ass stalk on it. And a bunch of little Brussels sprouts. Now I know. When it starts growing upward, you're supposed to put a stick on it. And yeah. take off the leaves off the side of it. How tall does it got to be when you do that? Uh, when it gets about three and a half foot. And you take the leaves off the side of it. So the little sprouts in the in the on the stick start growing. So that would be up to my waist then. Yeah. Oh wow. And just like cabbage, mm -hmm. when it starts forming its head, and I'm learning this too. This this is the third year for us on cabbage. Is that they said that we need to push the leaves together more. And That's you do that with the dirt. Yeah. And you need to push the leaves more together. The first year we did cabbage, it was awesome. We picked the heads; they were great. And then we were out doing some uh, gardening work, and we happened to look over where the cabbage used to be, 
and another head was growing where the cabbage was. Yep. And I looked it up after he told me, go ahead and destroy it. I don't think you can eat it. I went ahead and looked it up and it said you can eat it. And it'll regrow it four times, I believe, is what they said on the internet. So that's fine by me. And that's cabbage I don't got to buy. And this family, we like cabbage. We eat cabbage, a lot of cabbage. I eat it with sausage. I eat it with uh, chicken. You can eat it with chicken. Make a cabbage dish with chicken. Do cabbage rolls. I can make cabbage rolls. Coleslaw. You can do uh, cabbage and... Potatoes. Corned beef brisket. Potatoes and cabbage. Potatoes and cabbage and carrots, actually. Mm-hmm. Or just potatoes and cabbage. You know, that's a meal to me. I would eat that over anything if I had that, you know. Just don't be around him after he eats cabbage. <laughs> but, and I, I really appreciate all you guys that are on our channel. And I just wish you guys would uh, share us a lot. Like the video. Comment. Don't be afraid to comment to and me. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We want to get up to 600 subscribers. There, there's a reason why I want to get up to 600 subscribers. More you get me up, more I get up more. Past 500 or more, and then up to 600. I will be, be able to start doing things that maybe will help my channel more. And Companies will reach out to him. He's already got his mind going about sauces he wants to put out in the supermarkets if he can get companies to go with him. But in order for them to go with him, he's got to have at the least 600 subscribers. Yep, I got to have 600 subscribers where they start letting me produce sauces. And I will. I will put them out there. Sauces. Seasonings. Um, seasoning. Seasoning flowers that I do. Mm -hmm. And I will give them to you guys. And you guys, and I, I will do things that a lot of people don't see that, like, I can start making shirts. Mm hmm After 600 subscribers, I can start making shirts and stuff. Shirts, hats, mugs. Yeah. Merchandise. And then, then I can have more subscribers where I can, like, like, in a, one day I'll do a live stream and, and pick somebody out of live stream and give them something out of the merch area. You know, that's what I want to do. But I cannot do this all alone i'm trying to push it and i've been reading about youtube but the only thing they say is you gotta have at least 600 subscribers before you can start getting companies to follow you and see what what you're doing and i work hard trying to do everything for you guys and i know you guys work hard watching my videos taking your time out to watch these videos and i appreciate it a lot 23 minutes now I'm sorry, it's a long video. <laughs> this is going to be a long one. But I just want to talk to you guys a little bit, you know. You know, I feel like I don't show you guys enough. That's what it makes me feel like. When I do my prep work, I want to do it before I put a video out. The reason why. Because you guys are going to be on video for a long time. Because cutting vegetables takes like at least 10 minutes or so. Because... Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there cutting them, and then I got to clean them and take them off, and mm -hmm. and sautéing stuff, you know, like sautéing the hamburger. That that takes time. It takes like about five minutes. But yeah, I don't mind doing it. But if you guys want me to do an uncut video, tell me. I will do an uncut video for you. It might be long, but you'll see my uncut video. I'll do one for you just to show you what how to process to start a video. To all the way to the end. And then while it's cooking in the oven or something or doing the other things it's supposed to do, I'll sit here and talk to you if that's how you want it. Because when I do like these, okay, I'm doing the beginning process. This is the beginning process. I cooked the meat and everything and made, the, made it. But this here takes about 10 minutes in the oven. So I'll be sitting here 10 minutes, and that's why I stopped the video. So... It can cook. And when it gets done cooking, I put it out and show you guys. This is what I did. But if you guys want me to show you the everything else, I will. I don't bother me. But I need to know. Please. 
send me a message say hey show us the process I will show you the process and it takes time I'm in you can ask mama you can ask these kids they'll be in the background I'm hungry wait a minute and they do they do even when I stop the video they'll come in here at the video stop when's dinner done five minutes later I'll tell them it's, it's about done and they'll go come again and they'll go when's dinner done almost <laughs> it's funny but we got to go to graduation at uh, 1 o'clock and we got to pick Sissy up at 12.05 so we got a busy day today so this right here goes in the oven at 400 degrees for approximately about 10 minutes once it's done I will show you what it looks like and I appreciate you little chefs how everything's going and appreciate everything you guys do staying on my channel so my family really loves it and I really love doing this for you guys so y'all like and subscribe the video and I'll see you in a little bit peace okay Papa's back uh, little chef I made some uh, Spanish taters and then Nothing real big deal. All you do is cube them up, put a little bit of taco season on it, and stick them in there. I was giving the kids their food real quick. That's what I was trying to do. Plus, make everybody's plate. That's what I'm working on right now. They're still huge. They didn't shrink. There you go. <gasps> Everything wants to fall on me today. Thing likes you. Apparently, first it was a cupcake. Now it's this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It just, that's how things have been going today. And so you got to do is... Cut them up in little cubes. Deep fry them for a little bit until they get brown. And they're done. And then put some taco seasoning on it and a little bit of salt. And then serve them. They're pretty easy. Not that hard to do. And then the burrito turned out beautiful. Still got big. Probably won't be able to eat it all. I ain't been eating a lot because I'm losing a lot of weight. Down to 369 now, and my stomach's changed a lot. I can't eat what I used to eat. The way I used to eat, it bothers me. Tomorrow's shot day again. Yep, tomorrow I get my shot. Little old man graduated from 5th grade to 6th grade. Sizzy's going on to 10th grade. Proud of her and him. I'm proud of both of them. Um, but I love you all little chefs pray for everybody out in this world that's going through a lot and people lost their loved ones in Downport I pray for them every day because it's sad to see that you know been watching it on the news every day but pray for everybody in this world and I pray for you guys by now they're not recovering bodies or taking the building down yeah they're taking the building down now after they found they found them all finally mm -hmm. god god let them go home the ones need to got to send home early and the ones that didn't get sent home early are back with their family and i feel blessed for all of them but i feel bad for the families who lost their ones but y'all have a great day and take care y'all i'll see you and like subscribe peace